They smell of aluminum pop cans, most of this grocery bag. That's the outfit. The aluminum bars. This is the equipment I use. Tongs, gloves, protective glasses. There's the slide bucket. The 10 pound smelting furnace. Crystal. Let's have a close look at the bars. Not perfect. There's the graphite mold. These are my gloves, the pyrometer, my protective goggles, glasses. This is the, the smelting forge or smelting furnace itself. Steel, when it's superheated, forms these beautiful, colorful oxides, patinas. Have a close look near the blowhole there. Blue, purple. Look at the flame tube input. How beautiful blue, that cobalt blue color that transitions into those warm straw yellow and orange colors. There's even some green and purple in there. And even the wing nuts are starting to warm up in color. Stainless steel, when it gets really hot, forms beautiful colors. That's the crucible's cracked surface inside the flame tube. That's borax, and the crucible's still searing hot. It's been cooling down for 45 minutes, but let's have a nice look at that. I always add borax at the end and start of every smelt. It seems to really help with the flow properties of the metal casting. It burns out the impurities, too. This is the slag, the impurities. I use a stainless steel spoon, this spoon right here, I, and that gets so hot it's starting to color. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And when the crystal's hot, I scrape the slag off the top before casting the aluminum bars and the graphite crystal. That's into mess material. This is the borax, special thanks to the 20 mule borax team. I know they use this as a detergent booster in laundry systems, but I use it as a flux uh, for casting aluminum, smelting aluminum. Works great for this application. Special thanks to Burnsomatic for this exceptional propane tank. Tank that's the tank I use to fuel the it's a propane fueled forge. So these lighters here are the unsung hero of this operation. You can see that it's low on butane, so we'll use the external butane tank to refill it like that. Now I use that that flame there, this quick start, to actually light the forge. So when you turn the propane on, you gotta light it, and here we're refilling it. You gotta vent the propane after you fill it, or the butane after you fill it. So you see how big the flame is at first? Then you flip it back over and then do it again, and you'll see you can progressively fill more and more. And then this makes a big flame because the pressure's much higher, and then you can finish fill it by doing a third pass. And 